Hi, I'm Codex, and in this video, I'll be talking about some tricks that I use to make getting flawless or five gem runs in layer 12 Torghast really easy. In practice, maximizing your score on each floor of Torghast is functionally equivalent to something called the traveling salesman problem. The premise of this problem is that we want to try and traverse each floor such that we do everything available on that floor, meaning killing all the mobs, breaking all the urns, opening all the chests, and so on and so forth, without backtracking or going to the same location twice. The reason for treating Torghast in this way is that you get points for doing these things, but you also lose points for taking too long, meaning that you want to try and avoid time waste while maximizing completion. Now that's a somewhat technical and wordy way of saying that you just want to develop a route for how to travel through each floor. In practice, many floor layouts are mostly linear, and as long as you're mindful of the goal of trying to not backtrack, it becomes fairly obvious how to move through the floor to not backtrack. But that's not always the case. So here's some examples of floors that have multiple potential routes, and how I personally clear those floors. In Skoda's Halls, if you ever see a floor with this map, which can be identified by the first room being a very large round room, swinging axes on the other side of the room directly ahead of you, and then the option to go left or right, or if you look at the mini-map and see that it's just an utter mess relative to the other Skoda's Halls floors, the way that I do this floor is to go right initially and clear that room, which can occasionally have a rare mob, and then you loop back around, keeping the wall on your right, and then go past the swinging axis because there's always going to be an urn with an anima cell up the stairs. I then proceed and keep the wall on the right side and follow the stairs going up, which will lead you to the exit. Another weird floor layout to go to halls is this one, which can be identified by the fact that at the start there's going to be two paths, one on the left and one straight. The left path will go down some stairs, and the straight path will arc to the left. Full clearing this layout is one of the few that has an unavoidable large section of backtracking. The way to clear this floor is to go straight at the start, and then clear that area, then use the broker gate, get the urn with the anima cell, and then run back and take the other path. Be mindful not to jump down because you're not going to be able to get back up unless you drop the chains, which is slow, and also you're going to be clear to the other side, which then you'll jump down after that. On the upper reaches floor that starts with a set of fire traps and a swinging axe, clear the initial bridge and then jump and use a glider kit to get to the lower section in the middle. After clearing that section, run up and go to the right to clear the section directly after the initial bridge, and then move on hugging the right side and clearing the rest of the floor as you would normally. On the upper reaches floor that is a big open layout where the exit can spawn in one of three locations, my first goal is to determine where the exit is. And I'm specifically trying to determine if the exit is on the left side, which I call a left exit. I do this by looking straight ahead at the start of the floor, because you can see the exit if it was a forward exit, and then starting out by clearing to the left side, but I'm actually aiming my camera looking up the stairs for the right exit. And that's because you can see that first before you'd be able to see the left exit. If we see that it's not the forward exit and also see that it's not the right exit, then that obviously means that it's the left exit. If it's the left exit or a forward exit, I then cut over to the right side and clear that before clearing the stuff at the forward exit. Though if it is a forward exit, I tend to clear a bit more ahead of the left side before cutting over. Now if it's a right exit, then I just clear the left side, then the forward side, then move upstairs and clear the right side. In the fracture chambers, you can get the large floor that has the outside loop section on the right. The way that I clear this layout is to clear the left sides of the front two rooms, as well as any of the attached sections on the left side of these rooms before looping back and clearing the right side of the front two rooms, which will then put me at the entrance to the outside loop. Now it's worth noting that there is a pack that will patrol the middle three rooms, and depending on your clear speed, it might be patrolling in the third room while you're in the second room. You want to make sure that you kill this patrol before going back into the first room and then onto the outside loop, because otherwise it's pretty easy to accidentally skip this pack entirely. Then you clear the outside loop, then the third and final room, along with the left side attached room that goes with it, before finally killing the elite, and then moving on. It's also worth mentioning that if you get the variation with the broker portal for the outside loop, it's faster to just use a glider kit back rather than grabbing the grapple hook and using that. After optimizing your pathing on each floor, the next thing to consider is trying to optimize empowerment, which means that you've got to understand how the empowerment bonus actually works. At the end of each floor, it tells you what percentage of things that you did on that floor. 
you gain completion from killing mobs, breaking urns, opening chests, freeing souls, and doing the NPC quests. The empowerment bonus works the exact same way as the completion percentage, with the only difference being is that it only tracks floor completion while the empowerment buff is active. It has nothing to do with the time that you spend while empowered and everything to do with what you did while empowered. So with that in mind, it is preferable to cast empowerment on large packs of mobs, and ideally you should cast it right before they die so that you aren't wasting your empowered time because you only get completion percentage when the mob dies, not for the percentage of the health that you did while empowered. You should try to line up your empowerment usage with killing elites and rares, because they count for a significant amount of completion percentage. So it is preferable to try to hold empowerment for these particular packs, but again, try to use it right before they're dead. Another little trick that you can do to leverage how empowerment works in Torghast is the fact that if you are empowered going into floor 3, then his timer gets paused, but you will still have the empowerment buff active. This means that you can get the empowerment bonus for the soul remnants that you free and the urns that you break on that floor. Finally, there's a lot of small little optimizations that you can make to save time. Potion cooldowns actually reset after each floor, so if you were so inclined, you could use a speed pot or a DPS potion on every single floor. And the same is true for drums, because they also reset on every floor, including your sated debuff. Now, obviously, this can be very expensive, but if gold is no object, then feel free to chain chug to your heart's content. For the lever chest, an alternative to spamming levers and hoping that you get the right combination is to count to 16 using binary gray code. This is just a fancy way of saying that you check all of the possible combinations while only changing one lever at a time. The pattern to do this is pretty easy to memorize too, though inputting it quickly can take a little bit of practice. And that pattern is this. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 1. Because of how this type of counting works, it actually doesn't matter what label you give each lever, though personally I label them with 1 being the leftmost lever and 4 being the rightmost lever. Using this method, 50% of the time you will unlock the chest in 8 clicks or less, and in the worst case scenario, it's going to require 15 clicks. Sometimes, in the adamant vaults, there are these rolling spike ball trap things with the ramp. And sometimes, obviously, you go up the ramp, and sometimes you go down the ramp. Why is this guy here? Can't you see I'm busy? Anyway. Well, it turns out that if on the ramp, you start usually on the, on the inside here and on this little up upwards ramp, and then use a glider kit, you can go all the way down. I hope the information that I've presented in this video will help you get those flawless runs more easily. As always, tell me why my opinions and my routing are dumb, and how much you hate Torghast. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments, and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Lastly, I just want to say thank you for watching this video, and subscribe for more.